In a bid to stem declining membership, senior ALP figures are urging the party to rebuild to give the grassroots a greater say in who stands for election. A review of the ALP's last election campaign and its performance in government was done by Senator John Faulkner and former Premiers Steve Brax and Bob Carr and presented to the party's national executive meeting in Brisbane this afternoon. How to address mistakes made in the election campaign was kept confidential, but the executive did release recommendations for a major overhaul of party structures, including more open American-style pre-selections to reach out to alienated supporters. I recorded this interview with Steve Brax soon after the meeting. Steve Brax, when Julia Gillard became Prime Minister last year, she said the government had lost its way. Does this review show that, in fact, the whole party had lost its way and that's why grassroots membership has been so much in decline? Well, Heather, the review that um, we're releasing, that is the recommendations we're releasing and the, the party nationally, its governing body, will decide what they accept or not accept, is really saying that we have to continuously engage. You can't just assume because the Labor Party has had success at a federal and state level really in the last 15 to 20 years, significant success, that that will always be the case um, unless you keep replenishing, you keep getting young people involved um, and having a say and having quality candidates selected through having a say. And there's some of the key recommendations we're making. Expanding the party membership, having a say in the party affairs, uh, being involved in the selection of quality candidates, engaging with Australians who want to see a progressive Labor Party do well in policy terms and making sure that engagement is real. Do you think the party, as it stands, was in fact driving away grassroots support? There was a view that there was too much union control for starters and that nobody was listening to the grassroots. We have to open up the party. So what we're recommending is not just simply that we want party members to come back. Yes, we do. That we want party members to join. Of course we do. But we want to make it real. So democratisation of the party, um, having the national executive a portion of it elected by the whole of the party membership, having uh, primaries so that Labor supporters in seats can decide who the candidate will be as part of the selection in the future. Uh, really involving in real decision making, having a more democratic national conference and national executive, a real party president elected who goes for three years. These are all part of you know, meaningful involvements which will make a difference. So you can have a say, you can make a difference. Can we read into that that the party wasn't being democratic enough? And that's why you've had to recommend these steps, that there was a view that, that there was too much control by factional power brokers and trade unions. You can become too organised and in some ways um, not having you know, significant enough debates and discussion on policy issues or debates about um, who best is going to serve the Labor Party in, in, uh, in some of the decision making forums, uh, I think has been to the detriment of the party and we're recommending that we re-establish those debates, re-establish those discussions, re-establish those forums so we can have vigorous discussions on policy and, and what policy there should be in the future and a real and meaningful say. You know, when I joined the party in 1974, I was young and keen and able and wanted to make a difference. We want people like that again, but we've got to put a hand out and reach out to them and make sure there is meaningful ways that they can get involved, democratising the party, opening it up, uh, opening it up to the public, that's really what this is about. And in opening up pre-selections, going down the path of the US primary style, can mm. you explain mm. exactly yep. how that would work? And, and does that reflect that you haven't had the right class and standard of uh, pre-selections, pre-selected candidates? Well, we think um, and we're recommending that it's um, worth examining in some seats, some areas in the lower house of federal and state chambers, um, that people who are Labor supporters and register as Labor supporters can have a say in who the best candidate would be to represent the Labor Party. Now, we're, we're saying in a limited way, um, we're recommending that 60% be still by party members who live and reside in that area, 20% by affiliated union members who live in that area, but 20% by people who are not members. Uh, um, just Labor supporters, they can, they can sign up and register. They can have a say. Now, that's got two aims. One, it will help in getting better quality candidates uh, because there's contestability and there's a, a third-party examination of how good they'll be. But secondly, 
It will involve people in the political process. They can have a say. Who's best to represent them? Who's best to take the progressive cause up? And I think that's an important recommendation that we're making and I'm, I'm hopeful that the national executive will examine it carefully and I'm hopeful they'll adopt it. Your review has also gone to what went wrong in the last election campaign. That has not been released today. But can you at least give us a sense of the general thrust of that? Well, a fair bit went right. Um, Labor is well, in Well, you didn't power. win. Uh, didn't get a majority in, in the same right. right, but it was able to forge and negotiate a majority in the parliament uh, with um, independence and the Green Party. Um, so, um, you know, a, a lot went right. So it is commentary clearly on what went right and what lessons we can learn for the future for those things that didn't go as well. You've been an ALP member for a long time. You're a former Premier. Do you yep. think the politicians of today on both sides have become too risk averse? I think people want to know what your values are, what you stand for. And I, you know, um, sometimes I was criticised by um, being a bit too open or be, being a bit too um, um, liberal in the way I describe things. But I think this is what really um, is, is, is being looked for in the future. What you believe in, what you stand for, and expressing that openly. And I think, you know, the days of the uh, of simply uh, going for a grab and repeating it. I think those days are over. Um, and Heather, I, I think um, I think ex media, uh, uh, ex journalists, and, me and now media advisors are responsible for a lot of that uh, teaching and learning. And I think it's going to be unlearned pretty quickly in the future. Is my guess. Steve Brax, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Heather. I appreciate it.